Howdy folks. Little John out in the uh, brewery uh, and new episode the whiskey jar. Uh, today I'm just playing around Sunday afternoon just out and I'm just doing a bit of mixing on some of the uh, bourbon I've got aging on oak. Um, I've got quite a few bottles so I'm just playing around a little bit. Uh, now while I'm doing that, a uh, big thing I wanted to get up on the channel, particularly and what I've been waiting to do is um, the comparison between the two different mashes. That was the Uncle Jesse Simple Sour Mash and what I call Little John's Upgraded Sour Mash. Um, that being the difference being the Uncle Jesse's, you know, now I'll put links back to um, where I've done these in the past. But Uncle Jesse's is just using cracked corn and sugar and fermenting it to get a corn flavoured sort of a wash um, for making your bourbon uh, and then running several generations of that batch after batch uh, using the back set from each batch um, and over time it developed, developed some flavour and it's an easy way of making a bourbon like um, product um, I'd say more corn whiskey but bourbon like um, what I've been trying to do is to find a way of actually getting a more bourbon like result without going to all the mucking around of a, of a big corn mash itself um, and you know, the time that goes into that and the effort and yeah, and anyone who's ever done one knows there's a bit of mucking around. Um, so what I'd done was try and find a simple corn mashing process using flake corn as opposed to you know, uh, crack corn uh, and then mashing with some barley and some rye uh, and using a little bit of sugar to bring up the alcohol content just to keep things in a range where it was worthwhile doing. Um, but trying to get a much more genuine bourbon sort of a flavour. So um, I want to get onto that. So that's what I'm sort of looking at today. That's the main thing. I'm playing around just a few things. I'm getting some, just getting some bottles together for me, uh, little brother. Um, and I'm just playing around with some mixers. And I've just started. Um, so this is just the first one I've done. Um, before we do this. Um, Shout out to all Little John's Patrons. Um, guys, thanks for your support. There's a link down the bottom for Patreon if you're interested in finding out what it's about. Um, if, you, if you're watching watching the videos you know, and you're watching them regularly, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll uh, get notified any find anything's on when there's a new video coming up, whether it's whiskey, beer, just chatting, drinking, tasting, brewing, whatever it is, uh, you won't miss out. Uh, and if you like the video, hit the like button. Okay, so mm, that's not too bad. Yeah, so just get the speed with where I am at the moment. Um, I haven't done a lot of videos in this whiskey jar series in the last sort of six months, um, and there's been a lot going on, and this has all come to come to now. Um, so. What I've got just right here in front of me at the moment is a big old bloody four litre jar which has just got um, basics of the heart from the last little uh, um, little John's version of the Simple Sour Mash. Uh, and it was about, this is a four litre jar, I think there's about probably close to three litres in there. And that's just got a couple of big chunks of actual Jack Daniels barrel in there. Now that's been sitting just for, for one month, one month only. That was clean spirit, um, taken from a single run, a single single wash, run through a slow spirit run, uh, and, and this is basically the bulk of that run. Um, 
so it's quite young. And I've, used, I've used these Jack Daniels chunks before, um, and they produce a really nice, light flavoured um, whiskey. And what I've also got sitting here is this fella, this is a two litre jar. And this is also the LJSSM, but this is a batch that was done before that. Um, and this has been sitting on oak for two months. Uh, so, it's got a big chunk of the JD barrel. It's also got a couple of, a mix of medium and heavy toasted oak staves, which I believe these ones come from uh, God I can't think of Pumpkin, his name's Pumpkin, he's on he's on the Aussie Home Brewer forum or he used to be that's what I got him, he does a lot of um, distilling supplies I'll put a link down the bottom because I think all, all the stays and the chips I've tried with mucking around with, they're probably the best quality, I've found the best result with them. So there's a mix of those in there. Now, the young one went into this jar at 39%, the older one went in at 43%. I've just mixed up, I'm just running these through just a coffee, coffee paper filter. Uh, and I've mixed these up probably about maybe 55% of the older and 45% of the younger one um, filled it through and this is that's her in the in the bottle uh, it's quite nice that's her there I was just getting a AB, an alcohol reading on it it's sitting at 38% so we've lost just a couple of percent to the angels really quite nice it's um it's definitely got a bourbon feel as, as much as it's young now on that remembering that using oak directly can give you a fairly it's a heavier oak ratio than going into a, into a normal barrel so you can get the effect a bit quicker but this is probably sort of like maybe a year in a in a barrel sort of that sort of length for that, that a comparable sort of a thing so that's actually drinking drinking actually drank quite nice There's no real burn there it's very smooth very clean nice little bit of flavor um so i'm gonna leave this just aside for a minute. um just gonna pull, pull a couple of bottles out just to sort of give you an idea of just what I'm the depth of what I'm playing with at the moment. Uh, different stuff here. Yeah. These two, these are the jars I wanted to compare. Um, what I, and I said what I want to do, I want to compare Uncle Jesse's to the upgraded version. So that's Uncle that's the Uncle Jesse's simple sour mash. Uh, that was from just a single single mash, single wash. Uh, 
run through a spirit run. And this is the little Jesse's, oh, Jesse, little John's. And this is the, um, this is two months old. This is the same as the two litre barrel here, the darker one. Yeah. They both went on oak on the two months ago on the 14th of February. Uh, so technically, the white dogs on this are a little older, but they've been oaked for the same amount of time. Now, I'm not sure what the alcohol difference is on these directly. Um, we'll find out shortly. But they're both sitting on pretty much equivalent amount of oak. I think by memory it was one dark and one medium stave. So the colour is fairly, fairly, fairly similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the just enough of these at the moment so I can get a taste and an alcohol. doing that okay. I've got a couple more of these two litre jars now that one's pretty full these two come off my aging barrel so this is the second five litre barrel I've got um, and these have been in the barrel it was a combination of two batches. It was a um, it was a proper corn mash that I did a while back. To, if you go back through the whiskey jar, you'll well, actually I don't have a, well, actually I don't think there was a video because I think that was the day that it turned into an absolute schmozzle. Um And I didn't do the and then I, <laughs> the video just ended up not happening. Um, this this was the this was the actual the match that got me into looking at this little little John's option for the simple sour mash and playing around more with the corn trying to find a sim an easier way of doing it because this was a nightmare but I believe it's pre <laughs> should have I'm hoping have produced a superior product um, so what this is this has been sitting in the barrel it's, it's, it's been about nine months uh, proper corn mash full. Full blooded corn mash done from cracked corn, a full mash, and barley and rye, no sugar added. This is the real deal. Um, and they've been cut down. Yeah, that, they're both straight from the barrel, 64% straight from the barrel. So these have been on oak at barrel strength to maintain that sort of feel. This one's got. Just one chunk of the JD barrel in there. Now yeah, these were quite heavily, good, well coloured um, already. Another thing about the oak and the and the barrels. From stuff I've read, the estimation is that in a like a five litre barrel, you're getting about four to six times the ageing that you do in a in a normal in a normal barrel that they yeah in a rickhouse. Uh, which means that nine months in that barrel is equivalent, supposedly, to 36 to 54 months. So three to five for the years um, of ageing in a barrel, which is sort of the age you get for most premium, you know, for a premium whiskey. So I'm hoping they've come up all right. Um, I just put the chips in because it's just a little light on colour. Um, now, my barrels are, they're a keg, they're barrel from Kegland, they're Chinese made, they're not super quality. Um, so, I don't think they were charred as much as they could have been. So if you were to buy like a good quality barrel, 
um, like you know, good handmade one from you know, someone local, uh, which I would have loved to have done, but I couldn't justify it. You know, almost took you know, two and a half times the price. Uh, so I've just had a little bit more oak, and these have been on oak now for just under two months. And this fella, this big jar, has just got a couple of chunks in the bottom, a couple of, couple of staves. I uh, can't remember exactly what it is. I've written down what it is, but... So that's almost two litres at 64%. Um, so I'm, I'm going to play around with this one. I'm going to cut it back in a couple of different... Probably cut it to... Well, it'll cut to four bottles. Um, if I wanted to. But... I probably can. I want to keep it a little bit higher. So, but this fella... I'm, I'm just going to cut that. I've already measured it. I can I can put that in a 700 mil bottle as it is, um, and that's going to give me a nice percentage. I'm not sure exactly where. We'll soon find out. I'm going to do that shortly. But let's get back over here for a second. So we've got. The Uncle Jesse's. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Uh. Okay, that's a hell of a lot stronger than I thought it was. That is... 60, 60 prep, 63%. Yep. Okay. That's barrel proof. I didn't think that was barrel proof. So that's interesting. So right now, I'm going to put that back in there. And due to me having a, just a little bit of going on here, Let's just mark that so I know <laughs> what I'm dealing with. Because obviously that's going to have a big difference on potential <laughs> flavour. Uh, and more importantly on the you know, amount of burn that's going to come out of it. Because I really think this little, this little John's version is nowhere near that strong. This was a selected amount taken sort of through the hearts of the rum. It does look like it's a little bit lighter in colour. And I said, I don't think this is going to be anywhere near as strong. So we'll need the water back a bit here. I'm not popping this probably water here. Got me pure filtered water. Um, the pure AU, that's what I use, I, I use that to um, cut, cut my spirits, uh, it's pure, you know, triple reverse osmoted osmosis, filtered, bloody carried on, it's got nothing in it, it's just water, um, and it's probably a little bit too clean, it probably wouldn't hurt that a little bit more bloody mineral in it, but that's something that I will play around with with some of these other bottles which I'm not going to do today but it's something I will play around with um, I wanted to um, is comparing different waters uh, particularly you can see like say like Jack Daniels and all the brews they, they distilleries they use that spring water you know which quite often is quite heavy in minerals particularly um, you know lime deposits and that sort of thing so uh, I do want to play around a little bit with water. That'll be that'll be a, another day. Um, but certainly, yeah, it can be interesting to see how that works. But that's what I'm using at the moment. Um, and it works. Uh, gives me good results. Um, and if anything, I've got to say, like, to some degree, one of the biggest issues that I have with 
building the homemade whiskey is that sometimes it's, you know, and it seems like a crazy complaint, but sometimes it's just too smooth. Uh, yeah. That's about 42 percent. So that was so that's nice. That's a nice point. So okay. Here, 63. I need to cut about a third of it. So I want not that much. About seven mil. Tens the starting measurements. That's real handy. But we'll eyeball it. That's a fraction. Put just a drop water in there, and that's yeah, it's pretty close to where we want to be. Okay, so that should get both mixes around the same mark ABV. Okay, so that's the Uncle Jesse's, the fake corn mash. That's Little John's, which is much closer to being the real deal. And you can smell it in the nose straight away. There's, there's a much deeper caramel and you know, toffee notes on that. And on that, that's it's, it's got the note, but it's not it's not rich. This is rich, and actually, that smells really bloody nice. Well, it's dirty. That's got some burn, it's got some little, not prickle, but there's more fine burn, some nice little syrupy, nice caramel note. But the first thing I notice is that burn that wasn't there in the Uncle Jesse's, I mean, in the other version, in the Little John's version, which is been oaked for well, a similar amount of time. That's if anything, a little bit, little bit less. Still quite, still quite tasty for like a, for for a very young, <coughs> a very young bourbon. That's quite good. I said, and this is why the Uncle Jesse's is so is popular and that's why it's used so well by so many people. And, and this is exactly what it is. That's a simple sour mash. They get you a bourbon type product relatively, relatively, well not relatively, very easily, with very little mucking around. No, you just dump your stuff, dump the corn in, dump the sugar in, mix it up, put the yeast in, and let it go. Let it sit for three weeks and then run it through your still. And you're getting a reasonable product. If that was to sit a bit longer, I think it would smooth it would smooth out a little bit. But um, it's probably a little for me, it's a little bit too burny. You know, to sit down and enjoy just sipping sipping away on it. Now so the upgraded version. 
It's a much more, much deeper nose. That's as much as the core flavour is similar, it's a little bit, it's just a bit more there. It's, it's not more intense, but there's more of it there. Um, it's like 30%, yeah, 30% more flavour sitting in that, and nowhere near the burn. It's a lot smoother, there's a little bit of just that little bit of burning bite just on the very front of the tongue but it doesn't fill your mouth it's a slight you know got that little peppery bourbon bourbon effect but which is coming from the rye not from the actual alcohol it's much cleaner and it just feels like it's got just a little bit more body I mean, that's only very slight, and it's probably more because the flavour is a little bit bigger. It's probably more just how it feels. It probably isn't actually any any bigger the body. It just feels like it is because there's more flavour there. There's more depth, and more character. Um, so yeah, Oof. both nice. And if like I said if you haven't got the gear, you haven't got the equipment for mashing, Uncle Jesse's, and I've said this all along, ever since, since I first started, when I first started distilling, this is the first thing I did, was Uncle Jesse's, and I ran, I ran six generations of it, um, and I remember the last wash I did, the last, well, sorry, the last stripping run, or the last spirit run, was generation four, five, and six, um, and I gave that to people, and they didn't believe that I'd made it myself. They they believed what they, they thought I was like I was telling them I was, I was lying to them. I had it in the Jack Daniels. I took it to parties. I took it to events. I had it here. I had it in the Jack Daniels barrel, and people believed I was giving them Jack Daniels. Um, they didn't believe I actually made it myself. They, it was. I. It didn't taste like Jack Daniels. It did a little bit. It means a, it's a whiskey, um, and it had been charcoal filtered, but not to the level of a have a Tennessee whiskey but people couldn't believe that I that that was the quality that was coming out of something I'd made at home in the garage with you know very simple equipment I mean and watch the videos I've got simple equipment I've got a very basic pot pot column yeah there's nothing fancy about <laughs> about the gear I'm using um, and it's knocking out decent stuff that is a one run stripping you know UJSSM single generation run through a strip done for a bloody not done a strip for a spirit run hadn't even not even multi generation it's not multi generation stripped and then put through a spirit run it was actually it might have been two sorry I lie it may have been two generations t together but either way that is simple and it makes a quite drinkable drinkable brew if you want to drink it with coke. Let's, and let's be honest, that's what most people are doing. Um, despite what the snobs want to tell us, that we shouldn't be cutting out bourbon with coke. That's what most people are doing. That makes a, that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Picks up with coke. It's fine. It's like buying anybody, you know, standard off the shelf, you know, lower on bourbon. This upgraded version is yum. It's nice. Um, that is much, much better. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, and well worth a little bit of extra effort to get that to that point. Now, I really, it's not really fair if I don't do this. While we're here, um, it won't take long. I'm just going to fill it up. Just a touch of this barrel aged. Um, so I just want to try this and see what it's like. 
uh, just while we're on, just while we're on, I've got the camera rolling. Um, yeah, obviously it's going to be quite a bit hotter. I'm just going to get a chunk of ice. as we go. So what I want to do is just see how this is sitting to see, get an idea of where I want to water it down, how much I want to cut it back. Um, I said when this jar is 64% so I'd imagine it's probably sitting around 60 at the moment. High 50s at the very at the very least. Oh, beautiful nose. Yeah, there's no bloody, again, it's the same as this, but just, as it, again, it's just going up a little bit more. Beautiful caramel and toffee, sweet, sweet notes, vanilla. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that's, that is yum. nice burn working around the mouth but it's not savage I mean again at 60 barrel barrel strength you, you, you're not going to avoid that burn you expect that you got to you're not going to avoid that burn but it's it's still smooth it's sweet nice little spice lingering on the tongue mm, yeah yum Got no bloody, got no coke here to try it with. <laughs> That's a bit of a, they don't always have coke in life. I've normally got a bottle in the fridge, but there isn't one there at the moment. Um, so, it would really be interesting to see how that went with just a little bit of coke. But as it is, mm, it's quite nice. Let's let this bloody ice melt a little bit and just see what's sort of difference. How much that cuts back. I have no idea of where I can cut it to. Mm. yummy so as I said that is a proper corn mash that's the full deal um, but the flavor again it's, it's at next it's another level up the step from Uncle Jesse's to that sort of upgraded where you're working a little bit more with the flat corn and up to the real mash they're all a step they're not massive steps but they're steps and they're noticeable steps in quality as you go. No doubt about it. Um, so the big question for any you know anyone playing around with making their own is how much effort do you want to put in for you know as effort and reward, how much you know, are you willing to put in the extra effort? to get the better product at the end. And a lot of that's going to come down to time, yeah, space, do you have, you know, do you have the equipment, 
that's required to do a four corn mash. You know, that requires big pots. You know, the way of yeah, you know, a way of heating a big pot. You now, and by big pot, I'm talking yeah, you know, at least fifty, at least, at least a fifty litre stock pot. Um, to be able to match the amount of corn that's lit. and that's only for a you know, for a twenty one yeah you know, litre litre wash. It's not a big wash. You know, it's only a, it's only a smaller amount. If you're looking at big output, then you're talking much much bigger pots and much bigger amounts of corn and much <coughs> yeah you know, much bigger amount of work. Um, so the level the level <laughs> that you're working at is is it is going to be individual, but you need to be aware that <laughs> obviously there's limitations and there's differences in the product you're going to get at the end of the day. If you look if you're looking for cheap grog and you just want to get hammered on the weekend, you want to do it as cheap as possible. Uncle Jesse's simple. That's it. Bag of corn costs you 25 bucks. If you're in the city, you might pay 30 or 35 for a bag of corn from a, yeah, from a horse supplier or a pet supply. Um, but you don't use much. Initial, as I said, going back to that link to the to the original Uncle Jesse's. Um, I said you can go back and watch my first the videos, my first couple of videos where I very very first started, and I did the Uncle Jesse's. That 21, 22 litre mash or the wash is initially 4. Point, I think it's 4.2 kilos of corn and about about the same in in, in sugar. Um, and then each generation you're just topping up the corn. Uh, so from generation to generation you're probably only using about a kilo of corn. Uh, so at around a dollar, dollar twenty a kilo. Um, yeah. Batch of corn, four kilos of sugar is only, yeah, it's four or five dollars. Yeast, again, the yeast is your dearest part, and it's probably only about five bucks for the yeast you use. And once you've got that generation going, you can go a couple of generations without even adding yeast into your, into your, into your mix. But the reality is, for under ten dollars for your wash, from generation to generation, with Uncle Jesse, you, you, you're knocking out somewhere around five bottles of spirit at yeah, 37 to 40% alcohol. Um, so you're talking, even allowing, I think I even allowing the power of, of running the still and bits and pieces, it's under three dollars a bottle. Yeah, that's fucking insane. Three dollars for a bottle of bourbon. Um, you go to you go to the corn you go to the corn end and you start pushing a little bit. You work you're working at about eight dollars a bottle. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And it's up there with what you're buying on the shelf for. Yeah, 60, 70, 80, even yeah, 100 bucks a bottle. Um, and, you get, and you can play around, muck around with your, with your oaking and your aging and your processes and you know your alcohol, yeah, alcohol contents and you know make make your own your own style. Get it in the taste that you want to get to get it at, and it's dirt cheap. So. Yeah. From this, like the biggest thing I've learned, yeah, obviously, is that the, the the big end product takes more time, but it's a, but it's, it, it's better, and it's it, for me it's worth it, uh, particularly if you're into the craft. So if you just want to make cheap grog, stick down the bottom end. Don't worry about getting into the craft side of it. But if you are wanting to craft, get in the craft, do it right. Now this brings me to where I'm going from here. I am com want to combine the simplicity of the Uncle Jesse's with the proper grain backup of um, this upgraded version. So 
what I'm looking to do um, sometime in the coming weeks. I've got some rye, I'm ordering some rye today. I've got a little bit here, but not much. I need to order some more. But what I'll be doing is using the Uncle Jesse's base with the corn, with the, with the cracked corn, just going straight into the fermenter. Um, but instead of just adding sugar and water to that, I'll be doing a mash with barley, with rye. Um, I will need to add sugar to it to bring that up to a high enough alcohol to make it worthwhile. Maybe I won't. If I'm running generational, and I can sacrifice. If I look up, I think at the end of the day, if I'm, I'll have to think about that. But I think realistically, I like to run about eight percent on my wash. Um, but doing it this way would would require some sugar, probably about two kilos of sugar per batch, as opposed to four kilos. Um, but if I'm willing to take a hit on the actual output and go maybe six percent and get that's going to give me about two litres of alcohol two litres? ten? no, about 1.2 will give me about two litres of final product yeah, I can probably work, I can probably live with that so I have a free generation, so a free stripping runs and a free, yeah, free stripping runs and a spirit run would get me somewhere around, yeah, five, probably five litres of decent quality um, end product. Uh, you know, at that at that commercial rate, that's sort of forty-ish percent alcohol. Five litres, it's fucking, it's, it's eight bottles, so there's nothing nothing to sniff at. So um, that's where I'm going. So that will be coming in the. Um, in the coming weeks, that's where the next thing that's going to be happening with the whiskey jar, that's where it's going. Um, but between now and then, I've got to get all this stuff cut, blended, and in the bottles. Um, I think the little uh, brother's going to always will pop out of his head when he sees <laughs> how much I end up with. But that's me for today. So, guys, as always, thank you. Got any comments, any questions? Stick them down the bottom. Um, Shane Robin it. I hope this has uh, fulfilled your need for a new whiskey jar. Uh, patrons, again, yeah, cheers and thank you. Uh, big part of keeping the channel going and keeping things happening is is the patrons. Uh, but if you, yeah, aside from that. Subscribing, hitting the like button also help a hell of a lot. So do one of those three things, keep the, ch keep the channel going, we'll keep things happening, we'll keep experiments coming your way. So that's me for today. Little John, so till I see you again on the whiskey jar, cheers.